wasn't expecting y'all tonight. Welcome back to Fix the Family. My name is Raylan Alamar, and we are bringing you truth without compromise for the family. Welcome to my home, the Citadel. I'm sitting here li living the good life, Read my book, Three Marks of Manhood. You know, some of the things we talk about here on our channel and on our website are a bit countercultural. Let's face it. We talk about traditional family values, traditional roles of husband and wife, and in the feminist uh, culture that we live in, that's a bit countercultural. We've been getting a lot of views on the videos, a lot of comments, and most of those are to say, wow, this is great. Y'all keep it coming. Keep up the great work. You know, make some more videos for us to follow, whereas there are others that aren't quite so encouraging. One of the common things that's been coming up lately is, well, what does your wife have to say about all this? Or we'd really like to hear from her. So what we got for this series of The Good Life is just that. We have our wives here at, at the Citadel to explain and tell their side of the story and what the good life is to them. So come on over into the Citadel to meet the Citabels. So hey everybody, welcome to our home. These are the Citabels. Citabels, this is everybody. And go ahead and tell them about it. I'm Candy, and I am William's wife, and he's the guy who's usually behind the camera. And I'm Missy, I'm Raylan's wife, and Raylan is the guy in front of the camera. And usually when they are filming for Citadel, Candy and I are sitting in the living room having tea. So tonight we would like to share with you our tea and our conversation. They always want to know what we're talking about and why we get so giddy. so giddy. <laughs> they want to know what's going on. And I think some, they said some viewers too wanted to meet us yeah. and to hear how I think they we think that, that we might be laughing at them, but we're not. <laughs> we're laughing with them. Uh -huh. <laughs> we're enjoying it. <laughs> so um, one, of the, one thing we wanted to cover was um, some questions was um, dress, feminine and modest dress. And Candy and I, the way we dress, so we'd like to share with you our story of our transition into wearing dresses, skirts, and veils, and modesty. So Candy, for, for you, I know we both didn't always wear dresses and veils. No, we and sure didn't. I, I grew up not, we, we did not wear uh, dresses, and um, my story begins when I, when I met William and um, his, his family, his sisters, mm -hmm. and his mother, they all wore dresses and they inspired me um, in such a way that, you know, I've embraced a way of life that I just love and all my girls wear dresses and I, I just, I can't see any other way of life mm -hmm. and I love it, mm -hmm. you know, we, we make them, they, we let them wear dresses and, um, you know, William never really came out and said you have to wear a dress, it's something, it's a choice that I made because I know he would like me to wear a dress. Right. You know, he liked that because he grew up with that. And so, you know, I, I made a decision that mm -hmm. I was going to wear a dress to please him. And that's my goal, is to wear a dress mm -hmm. to please him and to be feminine. How, Missy, what's your story? Well, for me, it was because I saw other ladies wearing a dress and a veil. And I wanted... When we had one son and one baby daughter, I wanted to put her in the dresses, so I knew I needed to wear dresses right, too. Right, right. And a, a priest and friend of ours told me and gave some spiritual advice to me while in uh, being a young mom, wanting to be, a, always praying to be a good wife and mother, he said, ask the Blessed Mother to conform you into her image. So with that right. prayer... I began to change and right. the, the you, want you have to become her child. Want yes, to, a child to wear That's good. her clothing and her her attire. So for for me, like to trans the transition was when we went to church. I would wear I start I said, Well I'm okay, I'm gonna start wearing a, a dress to church all the time. Right. And then, so it started out with church, and then gradual. Time. It was For a gradual too. change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. That was like that with us. We started out. Um, William had bought me a few dresses at a time, and I'd wear them just when I was with him, mm -hmm. you know. And then that this was while we were engaged. And then at home, I wouldn't. I'd wear my pants. 
But then I said, no, I'm going to start wearing the dress before I get married because um, this is a decision I wanted to do. I wanted to wear the dress. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, if I'm going to do it, I need to do it. I need to do it no matter where I'm at. <laughs> right. So I started wearing a dress. For me, too, when, um, like I said, for ch in church, I started wearing a dress to church all the time. And then at home, gradually, uh, finding not dress up all the time, but older clothes, but still not right. sloppy and frumpy to wear right. at home. Yeah, you know, you and like, there's there's some people, you know, like at first it has started to wear, um, what about if you're cleaning house? You know, you're getting yeah. really dirty and grimy. We'll put on a pair of pants. But no, you, you can't do that because you're setting a standard right. for, you, for your girls and your, your, your children. Mm -hmm. If you want them to, to like wearing a dress and wear a dress mm -hmm. as as they're older, then you have to wear the dress right. all the time. We've, as for you, at, you have to set the example. Yeah, we have and found clothes at clearance and thrift stores and garage sales that Salvation are, Army. Yeah, <laughs> that are not expensive and um, you can wear them to work and to clean and mop and That's do right. gardening and things like that That's right. without being sloppy, but then not you don't want to be all dressed up in your good clothes. Right, right. So the, it was that transition yeah. a little at yeah. a time. Yeah, it's you, you have it's, for me. It's a balance. You you wear you know certain things you wear for certain for certain things, but mm -hmm. you know that for your Sunday best is your Sunday best, mm -hmm. and your your dirty grimy clothes is for dirty right. grimy work. Yeah, and it affects <laughs> our, our attitude. Yeah, it does. It does. That the way we dress, it makes you feel pretty, and it makes you feel modest, and it does something to the way we act. The way That's we right. think about ourselves, and we it makes also, you feel good, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's that's important today because a lot of people, you know, th there's a lot of depression in the world, and you know, I feel, you know, just by one act of wearing the the proper clothing, wearing a dress, wearing something modest, you feel dignified, you mm -hmm. feel good about yourself, and that sends a message. People see that, and that. Who knows who you could be seeing right. or talking to yeah. or anywhere. And dressing nice for our husbands too. It, the way it makes him feel and the way he sees us. And right. we tend to want to fix ourselves and dress nice when we're going somewhere or when we have someone coming over. But we should do that. We do that for our husbands right. too because right. he's important. And when he is. he's here... And it, it sets an example for the children. That's right. And our children do wear uniforms for school because right. again, in, it's school time and mentally, you know, they're doing their schoolwork right. and then they change into yeah, their they, play they clothes. Need to, they after. need that transition. I'm going to wear a uniform for school and I'm going to wear play clothes for play. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to wear a suit or a dress or something something better for church. You know, your Sunday best, I'm going to wear my best for church. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, you know, there's a certain set, you know, set of clothing that mm -hmm. you wear for certain things and I think that's important.